Well, hello everybody, my name is Roger and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today I'm doing another book review and the book I'll be reviewing is entitled Running with Lions by Julian Winters. But first off, how about this gorgeous cover? Isn't it stunning? You know, the first time I saw this cover online, I knew that I had to read this book. So, so yes, I do judge books by their cover. Anyway, I think that it's really beautiful. And it gives you a real feel for the team uh, which this story revolves around. So, I'm going to upward uh, to the story. So the story revolves around a soccer team called the Lions and pretty much the entire book takes place while the players are at summer sports camp. So the main character is Sebastian Hughes, the team's star goalie who has aspirations of becoming captain. So Simon is bisexual and several of his other teammates are also gay or bi. They are all fortunate in having a coach who provides a welcoming and safe atmosphere where the players do not have to hide their sexuality. So Sebastian is all set to have an epic summer at sports camp when he is blindsided uh, by his childhood friend Amir Shah who shows up to camp planning on joining the team. The problem is that something happened between the two of them years ago when they were kids and now Amir absolutely hates Sebastian and he doesn't go out of his way to hide that dislike. Amir is also somewhat sort of a loner, kind of a misanthrope, uh, as he doesn't really get along with anyone at school, including the other team members. So he keeps everyone at a distance and, and makes no effort to, to close the gap between him and the other guys on the team, even, uh, even while at summer camp. So, but Sebastian tries to reconnect with Amir for the sake of the team, and he sets out to regain Amir's trust. But in spite of Amir's increasingly bad, negative attitude, Sebastian finds himself not only attracted to Amir, but also developing uh, romantic feelings for him, which really uh, sends him for a loop. So this kind of reminds me of a line in a movie, and you know, I don't remember the name of the movie in which one of the characters says to the other, I hate you, I hate you, yet I find you strangely attractive. <laughs> so, if you can, what movie was it? If, if any of you know, let me know in the comments. So anyway, as you can probably guess, a romance develops between the two of them, but it's not easy going and there are several obstacles that they're going to have to overcome. So on to what I liked about the book. You know, I really like the relationship between the team members. You know, there's a strong bond between all of them, which kind of made me think but how often we choose our own families and that those bonds of friendship could even be stronger than families bound by blood. And that's the feeling that I got from the team here, that they were one big inclusive family. This was especially true with these guys, I think, as they were able to express their sexuality without any judgments. So all in all, I thought that a novel about an LGBTQ inclusive soccer team was brilliant. Though, I was thankful that the book didn't go into too much detail about the logistics of the sport. You know, some books go a little bit too far with the game play-by-plays, which, which can really be annoying to me because, you know, I'm not really a much of a sports person. Now, Sebastian's character growth was also really something that, uh, that resonated with me. You know, initially he lacked self-confidence and had a rather, rather negative self-image, no doubt, doing, no doubt uh, due to the bullying that he experienced at school. There's also his struggle with feeling unworthy uh, to be the team's captain. He also was not happy with his body, feeling that nobody could ever be attracted to him. So I found it interesting that the story dealt with body image issues from the point of view of a boy. Uh, I found this quite refreshing actually, this, this isn't something that we often see. Uh, I enjoyed seeing Sebastian progress and grow throughout the story to be a more self-assured and confident character. Uh, his relationship with Amir helped to boost his self-confidence, I think, especially in regards to uh, the body acceptance. Uh, I also thought the romance between Sebastian and Elmir was sweet and very well done. You know, I'm kind of a sucker for the frenemies to lovers trope, so, so this uh, really worked for me. Although, you know what, this is more, 
more, uh, more than uh, enemies to lovers, so it's more of a best friends to enemies to reluctant teammates <laughs> to lovers trope, which all uh, worked quite nicely in my humble opinion. So on to what I didn't like about the novel. You know, there was one female character, one main female character in the book, Grey, and she was treated horribly by one of the teammates, Mason, uh, the boy that she had a crush on. He would go out of his way to be rude and mean to her throughout the book, and there was, there was never any consequences for the way that he treated her. Yes, I know, his behavior was explained away as he's mean to her because he really likes her. But you know, this old cliché trope just does not work for me. In fact, I actually hate this trope. Um, so Gray was kind of a cardboard cutout to me, I think. And all we see is her almost desperate one-sided crush on a boy who is not nice to her at all. So I don't know, that whole thing just rubbed me the wrong way. Now, another thing that I didn't like about this story is that it was told in the third person present tense. Um, Mason replies, no. Elmir takes another dip at the ball. He looks at him. Bastion beams, etc., etc., etc. I never liked this tense in a book, and I've actually DNF'd books in the past because of it. I personally find it jarring, and it has a tendency to pull me out of the story, and sometimes I find it a little bit difficult to get past it. So I know many authors write in this tense, and many people doesn't bother them at all, but it's just a personal preference of mine, and I actually tend to stay away from books that use this tense. So this way it might be why the writing felt kind of stilted and disjointed to me from time to time. There also wasn't a whole lot that went on in the story. Sure, there was some mild angst, but no serious dramatic conflicts. You know, I have to admit that I was kind of waiting for some explosive event to, to take place and to, to shake things up a bit, but there really wasn't much to speak of. There were no surprises, no plot twists, and the story ended up being rather predictable. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but I did get a tad bored from time to time as the story progressed. On to my final verdict. So Running With Lions was an adorable, character-driven story with a likable cast of very diverse characters. So, given that this was more driven by the characters, there's not a whole lot of action going on. So, if you like your novels to be nail-biting roller coaster rides, uh, you won't find that here. Luckily, the characters were multi-layered enough to hold my interest, and I did uh, find myself uh, quite invested in what happened to them. So, this was a light, fluffy summer story about friendship and love that was fun to read. Though it was somewhat of a light-hearted romance, it also dealt with several other important issues such as bullying, uh, both Sebastian and Elmir, and uh, homophobia and racism. So, if you enjoy light-hearted, sweet summery romances or, or stories about gay sports teams or uh, summer camp, then you'll definitely want to check out this book. Though it was a little light on the plot, I did end up enjoying it, and I'm glad that I read it. It's a worthy effort for a debut novel, and I look forward to seeing what uh, Mr. Winters comes up with next. I ended up giving this book three stars. And uh, that is it for this time. Uh, as always, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And, uh, and I will talk to you in the next video. Roger now!